Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to draft a dirndl style skirt made up of a rectangle that gathers into an elastic waistband. The dirndl is a base skirt style that can be altered to create other styles of skirts that feature fullness from the waist to the hem and are economic with their use of fabric. Check out my Patreon in the description below for a written guide for this tutorial and options for private tutoring in Clo3D. Let's get started. Before we start drafting, I need to collect some measurements. So I'm going to go to the basic circumference measure avatar tool that's over here in the 3D toolbar. Um, I'm just clicking and holding this measurement icon and it gives me several options. And for circumferences, we're go just going to use the basic circumference measure. So with that selected, I'm going to zoom in to my avatar's waist and I'm going to click on this waist guideline once and then I'm going to hold shift I'm going to click twice and then while I'm still holding shift I'm going to click a third time and that gives me that waist measurement which is 24 inches we're not going to use the waist measurement itself we're actually going to minus four inches from the waist measurement and that is measurement we're going to use to calculate the length of our elastic. And we're going to just use that measurement for basically every other width circumference in the skirt as well. All right, now we need to know how long uh, we want our skirt to be. So under that same icon for the basic circumference measure, I'm going to click and hold and choose the linear measure. And I'm just gonna click somewhere on the side waist point. Again, holding shift to lock my measurement to the y-axis and uh, let's just pick a length I think somewhere around maybe even a longer skirt will be nice for this style so let's see maybe maybe like 40 inches and I'm just going to double click and that gives me that measurement right there the third measurement we need isn't actually a measurement it's a ratio it's going to be the width of the skirt compared to the waist ratio and I have included in the description the uh, a few different ranges so for example heavyweight fabrics would be the width of the skirt would be 200 to 300 percent the width of the waistband for medium weight fabrics it's 300 to 500 percent and for lightweight fabrics 500 to 600 percent these are just suggestions and there'll be opportunities to play around to figure out the ratio that works best for the style of skirt that you're going for um, after we build it for this tutorial i'm going to be using the standard avatar measurements and those are included in the description for reference all right now we're going to be making a skirt with an elastic waistband so we actually need to draft the elastic that is going to be inside the waistband that will hold the whole skirt to the waist so to do that we're going to go ahead and go to the rectangle tool that is the s hotkey and it's over here in the 2d toolbar the rectangle tool and with that tool selected we can just click anywhere in the 2d window and we can type in for width we want that waist circumference minus four inches so for me that is 20 and then the height we want everyone can just do two inches we'll do a two inch wide waist uh, band elastic for this and then go ahead and click OK I want to give myself some internal lines on this elastic piece because we're going to simulate top stitching through the outside of the elastic casing through to the elastic. So to do that, I'm going to go to the edit pattern tool. That's the Z hotkey and that's over here in the 2D toolbar, edit pattern. And I'm just going to click anywhere in the 2D window to deselect the, the rectangle that I just created. And then I'm going to click the top and then hold shift and click the bottom line and with those selected then I can right click the selection it doesn't matter where if it's here or here but it does have to be on the selection so right click and then choose offset as internal line and now I can type in the amount I want uh, to offset this internal line for the top stitching so number offsets leaves let's leave that at one distance is all and let's go ahead and do a half inch so I'm just gonna type in 0.5 and that looks good to me just leave these alone and click OK all right let's just sew this elastic together at the back so I'm going to go to the segment sewing tool that's the N hotkey and that's this icon up here in the 2d toolbar Duh, there's lots of different sewing machine icons it's the second to the top and then with this tool selected, I'm just going to click 
on um, this is going to be the one of the sides of the elastic I want sewn and then the other side those are both going to be the center back um, notice that when um, I drag my mouse and I hover over if I click near the top it will show me that I'm going to sew these straight together and if I click near the bottom it's going to show me that they're crisscrossed just make sure that they don't crisscross and um, go ahead and click that second one and you'll know that it worked because it'll change it'll choose any color it might not be red and you'll know that those are sewn together okay we want to put the waistband elastic onto the avatar the easiest way to do that is to do shift f it'll make these um arrangement points up here um, these blue dots and we actually we want to go to the q tool the select move q tool that's this up here it'll get us out of the measurement um, mode and make it so that we can just select things and she looks a little bit more normal now and just click that waistband piece and then with it selected you can hover over your avatar um, over the little dots and you just choose where you want that to go so i'm just going to choose that right there and um, you, it'll kind of wrap around the avatar, which will help when we simulate for it to actually go on her body and not just drop off into space. All right, now I want to use the transform pattern tool, which is the A hotkey that's up here in the 2D toolbar. This is just the basic like move things around or scale things as a whole tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the elastic in the 2D window. I'm going to do Control or Command C to copy and then Control or Command V to paste. And then it'll give me a little option to, it just kind of hovering around. I just can click anywhere in the 2D window and it will then create a new pattern. And this pattern is going to be our waistband pattern. So we're gonna draft half of the waistband. So we could have just made another rectangle for the waistband, but I wanted to keep these internal lines since those are going to be the ones that are sewn to these internal lines and it seemed just easier just to copy it. All right, but we actually want the waistband to be twice the size of the elastic because this is kind of like the casing that the elastic is gonna go inside. So with the same tool, the transform pattern tool, I'm just going to, um, when I click on this piece I just made notice if I click on the internal line it just selects the internal line I really want to select the in all of it and we know it's selected because it's yellow um, it'll create this little bounding box and I can just click the side of the box and drag out this waistband and I could just you know eyeball it and guess what twice the length would be or while this is still selected um, I'm going to actually cl right click and this window will appear and it's the transform window and it's showing me the percentage that I want to uh, stretch it or I could just type in a number to begin with um, to avoid doing math I'm just going to go ahead and type in 200% that will make it twice the length and click OK. All right, one last thing. I actually want the waistband piece to be bigger than the elastic so that it has room for the elastic to be inside. Not by much, but by a little bit. So I'm going to go back to that edit pattern tool, which is right underneath the transform pattern tool and the Z hotkey. And with that selected, I'm just going to, again, I'm just gonna click anywhere in the 3D window to deselect that piece. And I'm going to do that shift click where I select both the top and the bottom line again. Then I'm going to right click that selection. And this time, instead of offset as internal line, we're going to choose offset pattern outline. And it's gonna give us the option of how much bigger do we want to make this piece um, extending on either side. So I think 0.125 inches, so that's an eighth of an inch is good. We'll leave the direction extend, number of offsets one. And then we do want to check create internal line because we will use that line later to sew the elastic in. All right, everything else looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay, now we're going to sew these these two pieces together, uh, kind of like we're top stitching the waistband over the elastic. So I'm going back to that segment sewing tool or the N hotkey, and I'm going to click the top of the elastic. And I'm then I'm going to click the top of the waistband, the topmost internal line, because remember this used to be the top line until we offset the outline. So that one's going to connect here. Uh, the in first internal line of the waistband elastic is going to connect here. And then this one will connect here. 
and then this last bottom line will connect to this internal line, not the external line, the internal line. All right, so now um, we can see that these are sewn together. Um, it created random colors for each assignment. And we can go ahead and before we simulate, because I, you know this piece is a whole shape in it of itself, we can actually help out the simulation by superimposing the waistband piece over the elastic piece and it'll just know where to go because we told it where to go when we sewed it. So going back to that select move tool in the, that's the Q hotkey, uh, go ahead and right click the waistband piece, not the waistband elastic, but the waistband that's bigger. And then um, right click, choose superimpose over. All right, and I just put it right over there and it squished it in even though um, it, it's bigger than the other piece. All right, now we can go ahead and press the space bar to simulate and there we go. So you can see that the uh, elastic is drawing in the waistband, evenly distributing, distributing it around. Um, the waistband is already sewn at the center back because we copied the elastic and the, it was sewn at the center back. So this is good. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I think it helps when you're gathering a really big skirt to sew it to a waistband that's also been gathered as opposed to just a straight waistband because that can get really bulky really fast. All right, you can mess with this and kind of move it around a little bit, but when you're, it's in a place where you're happy, go ahead and stop the simulation. Uh, do Control or Command A to select all, and then right click the selection in the 3D window and choose freeze. And that will keep the waistband in place when we sew our skirt so that it doesn't get all, it doesn't get all dragged down by the weight of the skirt while we're working on it. Okay, now we're ready to draft the actual skirt front and back piece. So I'm going back to that rectangle tool, that's the S hotkey, and I'm gonna click anywhere in the 2D window. And for the width, we're actually just gonna make it the same width as the elastic, so that was 20 inches. And for the height, that's going to be the, the length of the skirt, so we decided we wanted it to be 40 inches. Uh, the width could also just be the width of the waist. Um, I just said use the width of the elastic so that we would be dealing with less measurements and make this a little bit more straightforward. All right, go ahead and click OK. I'm just going to move this skirt pattern down here so we can see it better. And now with the transform pattern tool selected, that's the A hotkey, go ahead and um, you know click on this piece and then you can see that the bounding box is appearing and we're going to do that same thing we did for the waistband piece where we're going to click the side and drag it out and then while we're dragging it out we're going to right click all right now we get to plug in that measurement that we decided if you want like a pretty um narrow skirt you could just do 200 percent and make it the same width as that waistband um that would be good if you had a really thick kind of thicker fabric um or you could do like 600 percent if you've got a really thin fabric like a, a chiffon i'm going to do 500 because i'm going to use a cotton wall and i think this will be a nice um, ratio for that so go ahead and click okay Great, now let's just sew this skirt to the waistband. So going back to the segment sewing tool, the N hotkey, I'm just going to click on the skirt and click on the waistband, being careful not to cross those um, stitching lines. It'll, if, it'll look crossed if it's you know over here, if I click over here, and then it'll look straight if I click over here. And you can tell, you just kind of have to line these notches up kind of to each other. And I just wanna be careful I'm not clicking on that internal line, I'm clicking on the outside of the pattern. And that looks good. And once that's sewn, you can go ahead and press space to simulate and you can see how well your computer wants to work with this much uh, fabric. Uh, mine did pretty well, so that's awesome. And now we can go ahead and sew this center back seam. The reason why I didn't do all of that sewing at the same time is because it would just make it dif more difficult for the skirt to wrap around the waistband if that it was also trying to sew that center back seam at the same time. So I'm gonna stop simulation and zoom out. Going back to the, the segment sewing tool, I'm gonna to click on this side of the rectangle and then this side of the rectangle, that's the skirt front and back pattern. Looking in the back, that looks good, nothing's crossed and I can simulate again and it looks good.
Okay, we basically have our skirt, um, but we can't actually make this skirt in real life because um, the fabric right now is 100 inches and really there's only like drapery fabrics are made to be cut that wide. So we need to break it down into more pieces so that we can cut it out of maybe a 60 inch wide fabric. It'll also give us side seams, which is, you know, nice to have. All right, so to do that, we're going to go ahead and go to a new tool. It's the add point split line tool. That's the X hotkey. To get there, it's in the 2D toolbar. You actually have to click and hold on edit pattern and it's an add point split line right there. And then I'm just going to right click the top line of this skirt where it's sewn to the waistband and it'll get pull up the split line window. And we're gonna go do uniform split and we'll do four so that we can put a side seam here and a side seam here. And that will create points one, two, and three. Go ahead and click okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the hem. So right click this bottom line of the rectangle, uniform split, and then four, and that'll be points four, five, and six, okay. I'll go ahead and annotate those using the annotate tool just to help us keep track. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the internal polygon slash line tool. That's the G hotkey and it's right here in the 2D toolbar. And I'm gonna click point one and then I'm going to double click point four and that'll create an internal line that we're going to use to cut on to create the side seam. I'm going to do the same thing, clicking point three and then double clicking point six to create a line there. Now we just need to go to the transform pattern tool, the A hotkey, and we can right click um, these lines. I'm just gonna shift click to select them both, then right click the selection, and then choose cut and sew. So it basically, it, it did exactly what it sounds like. It cut the lines and then also sewed them back together. At this point, you just wanna double check that this big piece in the middle isn't wider than your fabric. So you can do that by uh, shift clicking both of these lines. Um, I have 50 inches, so that should fit on my 60 inch wide fabric and um, I won't have a problem. If uh, you do have a problem, you can do one of two things. You could go back a couple steps. You could put your seams in a different location or you could just change the scale of your skirt by going to the transform pattern tool and then um, scaling the width appropriately. You can even right click and then choose the width this way. Um, I think it's using the width of um, the middle piece here, but you kind of have to keep track of which rectangle it thinks you're talking about. Um, but mine looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as is. And with that, this skirt is actually done. We, we did it, it's very simple. The trickiest part is just the waistband. Just be sure when you cut this out, you know that this top piece needs to be cut on the fold so that it can wrap under the elastic as well. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial because we won't see it from the preview and it will make the simulation trickier if you are a beginner. I'm gonna go ahead and take this tutorial a little bit further and show you how to make the skirt look really good in the 2D window. So if you wanted to show a director or another collaborator what you're working on, um, they'll be able to understand a little bit better what you're talking about. So one thing we can do is actually change the fabric to, in, to the fabric that we want to use. That is in the object browser. If we click on fabric one, uh, in the property editor, you just saw that all of the settings just changed. And now these are the properties for the fabric. I can scroll down to the very bottom and under physical property, where it says preset custom, I can change that to my cotton wall. So I'll go ahead and click that. And that changed the properties of my fabric. I can also change the color. So if I know kind of the color I'm thinking for this skirt, maybe let's choose this brown right here and then do apply and close. And that looks really nice. Uh, I can also add graphics to it. So maybe I'm gonna put a trim on the bottom or maybe the, fabric itself has a border. To do that, I'm actually going to go to graphic 2D pattern in the 2D toolbar. And when you click that, it pulls up 
you know, everything on your computer. So I'm just going to navigate to this medieval trim that I made for this tutorial and is available on my Patreon if you're interested. And I'm just going to double click that. And then it says click on a pattern to add graphic. I can click anywhere on any of these patterns. I have to do it to each one individually, so it doesn't really matter which one I choose. Let's choose this one right here. Uh, the, you can leave the width and the height alone because that's just the size of the trim that I made. And then under position, on when it says left, right, up, down, on down, you can go ahead and type zero and it will lock it to the bottom. It kind of sh shoves it a little bit away from the bottom, but that's okay. And go ahead and click okay. And now the trim is a border and in the property editor under tile, I can choose X axis and it will extend all the way across. Um, and I can just repeat that process with the other two pieces. Okay, uh, you'll notice that the waistband is still frozen. We can go ahead and unfreeze that now that we're not fussing with it anymore. So you'll need to go back to the Q tool, which is the select move tool, command or control A to select all pieces, right click and then choose unfreeze. And then that will, you can see the color of the fabric now and then the very last thing we're going to do is and this is especially important with gathered fabrics is change the particle distance to a lower number so the particle distance if i go to the mesh here and um i show you what <laughs> the polygons that are making up this skirt you can see they're only so big and the fabric can only fold where there is a line for each of these triangles. So um, the what happens is the gathers end up getting really, really bulky and maybe not exactly what it will look like in real life. So one thing I can do to make that more accurate is go to the high res garment button and I can just click that. And it, you, you can see it says under particle distance, um, it probably says tw yours probably says 20 or I don't, I don't know what it says i'm actually going to go ahead and type in 10. um the lower the number the better it looks but the more demanding on your computer it is so you kind of have to experiment i recommend starting with 10 and if you can get down to five that that's great um you can go ahead and leave the rest of these alone for now and click ok and you can see all of those triangles just got so much smaller which is going to give more definition to my gathers so I'm going to go back to um, the thickness, thick textured surface um, mode. And I'm when I press simulate, um, you're going to see it just looks a whole lot more like what we'd expect cotton wall to look like when gathered. And that will help a lot. Um, I'm actually going to go even further down and so we can see what it looks like with five millimeter. All right, it's really slow, but it looks even better. So that looks really nice um, to show a collaborator or a director. You can even go to quality render mode, which is this right here, and um, she looks really nice. So that's all for this tutorial. I'll do another set of tutorials on other versions of this skirt that you can try. And until then, um, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.